we have to remember that we are part of nature. We actually aren't separate from it. This is part of our self-care. In today's self-care journey, I sat down with Louise Westra, the founder of Louise Westra Health Mastery. She's a naturopath and a coach who works with clients around the world, helping them achieve their optimal health and wellness by tuning in and listening to what their bodies are asking for. I hope you enjoyed this conversation. For the best advice on self-care and personal empowerment, be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell to get notified when I release a new video each Thursday. Hi, everybody, and welcome Louise Westra. Hi, how are you? Hi, I'm great. Thank you, Heather, for having me. Oh, thank you so much for being here. Everyone, Louise Westra is a gorgeous soul who I had the privilege of connecting with last year. We were in a program together and our paths crossed and I have been watching Louise grow her coaching business, grow her naturopathy business. Everyone, I'm super excited to have Louise with us today because this woman knows what she's talking about. She is the founder of Louise Westra Health Mastery, and she works with clients creating these bespoke, can I use the word bespoke? Mm -hmm. Is that a good way to Please frame do, it? Yeah. And I love that, by the way. <laughs> a bespoke program to help you achieve your optimal health and wellness. And you all know I'm really big into self-care. I'm really big into empowerment. And you know that I believe that in order for us to achieve our personal empowerment, we have to be taking care of ourselves. And this is what Louise is all about, giving people the tools and resources they need to empower themselves through taking care of themselves. So Louise, I just, first of all, I need to let you know that, you know, in the program, I know that we've been watching each other's journeys now <laughs> for a little while. And yeah. I just have to say watching your work grow and watching the impact you're making is just awesome. And, you know, you're, you're getting featured now and it's just super exciting to see you like actually like stepping into it and making it happen. So congratulations on everything. Thank you. That's really kind of you to say, but you know, it's been, I've been in, in clinical practice now for oh, 16 years. Um, and I think, you know, it's been a huge part of my journey is allowing myself to, you know, step into that visible space. Huh. Um, uh, because although I have, you know, it's, it's, it sounds, it's really funny when you think about it. Um, because as my husband reminded me not so long ago, you know, I have spoken to 180 people in, you know, in person. I've been on stage with, you know, uh, one particular female speaker who, you know, she's a, she's a professional speaker. Um, and that was, you know, terrifying. But, you know, I have done these things. So he was kind of like at one point, more or less, in the nicest possible way, what's wrong with you, woman? You've done all this other stuff. <laughs> Just get on with it. You are worrying about nothing. Yeah. And, and actually, you know, when I share a little bit of my journey, that, that has been a pattern and a theme, you know, uh, worrying about nothing yes, um, yes. Uh, for, you know, pretty much the majority of my life. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it great when we have those people who can remind us, like, no, actually, you've got this. You know, you, you've been there. You've done that. Just trust yourself because you know what you're doing. Exactly. So exactly. I'd love to start with how did you get into this practice? And if you can tell us a little bit about your background and yeah, why, why has this become your path of purpose? Yeah, well, it, it goes back to probably a couple of key moments in my life. So the first one is my maternal grandmother who... I recall her saying, Heather, to me when I was mid-teens, she was not well. She hadn't been well since before I was born. And I remember her saying, you know, if you've got your health, then 
everything else takes care of itself. Oh, wow. And that was a very powerful statement um, because, you know, 30 years later, it, it really still, you know, I, I remember it as a very key moment. The other reason that she was such a profound influence on my life, and I've really only realized this more latterly, is that when my mother was carrying me, so when she was pregnant with me, that was the moment that that maternal grandmother had her first heart attack. So the stress wow. and the anxiety that my mother must have been you know, going through at that time, I believe, this is my belief, had a profound influence on how I then came into the world. Yes. And it's not about blame. It's not about, you know, criticism. It's just about understanding um, whether we believe in karma or, or whatever. But I believe that, you know, I've needed to resolve that pattern of anxiety and worry um, because of the imprinting, the physiological imprinting that was given to me, whether it was, was mine to carry, whether it wasn't, it doesn't really matter because as an adult, we're responsible for resolving those things that have been, you know, perhaps, you know, given to us, even if we didn't, you know, necessarily want them or have anything, any choice as a child. Right. So, you know, those are two key elements of my story. Um, and, you know, so she gave me, you know, a gift or two gifts, really, because if it hadn't been for the fact that I have had this pattern of, you know, not really feeling great, always feeling like, you know, what was coming, you know, and, and just having that, that anxiety and uncertainty and, and also oscillating into, pre into depression at different times, then, you know, I wouldn't be in the position that I am, I am which is a, a highly privileged one to be able to offer people the opportunity to also work through their stuff yeah. um, and really get to a stage where they, you know, up level and create a, a, a much higher quality of life and, and an understanding about themselves, which I think is, is, is massively needed in this world, um, at this, particularly at this time. That, that's huge. And, and I love that, I mean, it's unfortunate that your, your grandmother was unwell and, and, and went through these things, but as you said, they're such gifts. And I think, you know, all of us come, come to the work we are meant to be doing in different ways and that she's a part of this story is is quite beautiful that she's the catalyst in some ways for for manifesting what you do so can you tell us a little bit about what you do you know you have this bespoke curated approach to the work you do which i love because i think and, and, you know, I'd love to get your take on this, but there's so much information online that I think a lot of times we try to look for the one size fits all solution. <laughs> like, oh, if I take this supplement or if I drink celery juice, which is all the rage right now, <laughs> if I, <laughs> if I, you know, take ashwagandha powder, if I drink turmeric shots every day, then, you know, it's working for everyone else, so it's gonna work for me. And I think what's important is that everybody's self-care journey is unique to them. And I'd love to know how you approach this bespoke curated approach and why maybe you think more people should actually seek out that unique curated bespoke approach for themselves sure well i i mean the the first thing is you can see behind me that i have my bulging herbal dispensary it's so beautiful by the way everybody i, know, I love it's it so beautiful <laughs> it, it, it's just you know it, it just gives me joy every single day if i if i need to i just come in and you know sometimes i just smell the herbs uh, because <laughs> they're just I just, you know, I just resonate so deeply with them. Um, but, you know, firstly, 
I really am, as you know, so incredibly passionate about this particular part of my work. Yes. Especially from the female perspective, because mm. here in uh, the UK, obviously we have, you know, the history of, we have a sad history around herbal medicine in the sense that it's been largely quite abandoned. Whereas in other parts of Europe, say Germany, for example, yes. it's been, they've continued to kind of champion it, look for an evidence base, use it alongside pharmaceuticals, often use it prior to using intervention with pharmaceutical agents, which, you know, don't get me wrong. Pharmaceutical agents can be life changing However, there's a cost to be paid for them because they are chemically based and we are biological entities. Mm. And you can't put a chemical uh, intervention into a biological creature without there being some kind of, of payoff. Uh, you know, a, 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 perhaps a positive one, but also always a negative one. So, you know, this medicine or, or this therapeutic tool is part of our history as women. And I think it's so, so important for women to take back the power that we've had through history of this type of approach so that they can. And I don't want to give women a feeling of, oh, my God, another thing to have to do. You know, that's not what it's about. But it's about arming us, uh, arming ourselves with the knowledge that our forebears have had for hundreds and hundreds of years. And actually, you know, we have evidence of herbs being used in a therapeutic way in Paleolithic graves. I think it's Paleolithic. Please don't anyone get cross with me if I've got the exact, you know, time span incorrect. But it's 40, certainly 40,000 years ago and even before that. So we have, we, we, have a relationship with nature that a lot of people have largely forgotten. There is no workaround for that. If we continue to be, as we have been for many, many years now, disembodied and, and disenfranchised from that, then we are going to continue to, to be in trouble. One of the ways to reconnect, I believe, with nature is to use this kind of pragmatic resource to nourish ourselves internally and when we understand quite simply that we are living the equivalent of two to three lifetimes in one now and i'm going to say that again we are living the equivalent of two to three lifetimes in one now on the one hand that is immensely enriching on the other hand it means that everything about our lives and our bodies is upregulated to a point that even if you are eating 10 servings of fruit and vegetable a day, which as you know, I am always, you know, banging on about. Yes, <laughs> which I love by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, this type of, of bespoke curated nourishment if you like because it is food it's food based but it becomes therapeutic and medicinal when needed when prescribed appropriately can offer us the opportunity to eat to either enhance a fabulous diet or to act as a workaround because we know that our diet is significantly lacking because we are time poor we have too many balls in the air and we just don't see how we can get you know, how we can step out of that at this point. So it's a, it's a, as I say, it's a traditional approach, but for the 21st century, it is a workaround uh, for many of my clients when they start off, but it is profoundly nourishing because we are taking the nutritional component of the herbs, of the foods, in a liquid medium and ingesting them in a way that requires no digestive energy. So it is like mainlining nourishment. And if we've got a debt in our bodies, which, you know, let's face it, I'm not saying that men don't have their struggles, and of course they do, but women tend to carry, and this is partly something that we also need to relax about and let other people help us with, in my opinion. Um, 
I'm, I'm, and I'm not saying that I'm not, not needing that either, but you know, often women carry so much mentally, emotionally about the family, the home, the running of the home, all the different administrative tasks that in the home, uh, the household chores, the shopping for food, you know, that, that they're just carrying with that with them on a day-to-day basis. And so it just gives this incredible ability to just start to reduce that debt and allow, uh, it kind of creates a space. It creates a space to be able to then have a bit more clarity Mm. around what does need to change. It creates a space around feeling like, maybe I, I'm not quite as frenetic now. And so I can see that I could stop and make a breakfast instead of grabbing a coffee and a donut on the way to my office. And, you know, this is the thing that I found over 15, 16 years of working with women and men. Um, and also in my own life that, that often I don't then need to give people a dogmatic list of things to do because it, it's obvious to them they know that you know intelligent an intelligent woman knows that she's eating a crap breakfast yeah she doesn't know how she can get past that because she knows what she should be eating but she can't get to it so if i as a practitioner sit down and say well you must do this then how is that assisting someone to care for themselves when I give them another dogmatic list or, or, you know, instruction that they just feel as unachievable. That is not setting somebody up for success or, or to take care of themselves. Yes. Sorry, that sounded like a bit of a rant. (laughs) It was great. It was great. And uh, Louise, what I love is first of all, you walk your talk you know what I mean? It's part of the reason why you can speak so passionately about this work is because you are always doing your own work, which I love, by the way, I love people who show up and do their own work. And Louise, you do this all the time. But there are a couple of things that I really loved what you said. And one is that we are living two to three lifetimes in one lifetime. And it's so true. I mean, our lifespan has expanded, right? Our, our, our life expectancy has expanded. What we deal with in the course of, our, of that expanded life expectancy has a dramatic impact on us emotionally, physically, energetically, spiritually. Um, and so we need all of these different tools and resources to help us navigate those two to three lifetimes <laughs> that we move through. The other thing that I love that you said is that this is, and that you connected us to, is that this is actually ancient wisdom. And you said, you know, that we're forgetting our connection to nature. And, and I feel as though we're almost forgetting that we are nature. We are not separate from nature. We are nature. And you made that connection with, you know, by saying we're biological beings. And we forget that. You know, we forget that we are a part of this natural organic ecosystem that surrounds us and that we ourselves have this ecosystem that we have the privilege of inhabiting for as long as we get that opportunity. And so why not cultivate that ecosystem so that it's, it's, you know, pristine and beautiful. You know, I think about these pristine and beautiful places that we visit. I, I live in Canada and we've got these gorgeous mountain ranges and these valleys and oceans and I want to keep them looking as beautiful as possible same thing here and I think about that slogan you know leave no trace Mm -hmm. we're just leaving traces of of chemicals and these things that we're ingesting that aren't necessarily serving us the other piece that I love that you said is that it's about empowering people to make the decisions for themselves that you're there almost as a guide to connect the dots to say, here the you know here's here's the recommendation, here's the invitation for a, a different way of maybe being or a way to start, you know, turning turning the ship in a different direction. But you're not dogmatic about it, and you're not prescribing it. 
And I think that that's really important because if we're not taking ownership of our own health and our own well-being, then we're reading somebody else's scripts for our health and well-being. And we kind of feel at some point, you know, we're going to fall out of favor with it because um, it has to be aligned with us and how we want to be living our life. Right. Well, well you know, that's exactly right. And, and the, you know, the point is, and, and one of the things that when I'm talking to people about, you know, creating a, 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 a kind of a routine, you know, or, or some kind of program of, of, of healthcare, you know, healthcare and self-care are not, you know, I don't really differentiate between the two because yes. this is self-care. Yes. You know, when somebody says to me, I have no time, you know, I literally have no time. And, and when they tell me what they're doing, I'm like, yeah, you know, I, I, I hear you because this whole idea, you know, that's perpetuated on the internet of we've all got the same number of hours in the day. Well, you know, if you're a single <laughs> woman, I mean, I just recently, you know, went from, uh, having one child to having two, yes. um, and uh, you know, it's it, as you know, it's it's not it's slightly more complicated in the sense that we are in the process of adopting a three-year-old, and yes. so when we had our own three-year-old who came out of my body, yes. um, by the time he was three, because he was consistently parented, we're not you know nobody's perfect, but he was consistently parented. Um, he knew the drill, you know, he, mm -hmm. he knew where this ship was sailing and you know, what was negotiable and what wasn't. And, and yeah, we could have a bad day and he could have a bad day and you know, it, it could kick off. But generally speaking, it was pretty plain sailing. This is a three year old who, you know, was unfortunately, you know, had to be removed from his biological parents mm -hmm. and then lived with um, a wonderful foster family who have loved him to bits. Mm -hmm. However, they were never given the support to guide him. So he's come into our home with an understanding that if you're sitting, if I as, an, as the mother am sitting in a, in a, you know, on my sofa in the lounge room, if he comes in and he wants to sit on that sofa in that exact spot that I will move. <laughs> now, maybe in other people's houses that works. That does not work in our house. Right. So what I'm saying is that, you know, we all need to be aware of what's going on for us in order to be able to plan for that in the nicest possible way. Yeah. And or at least to understand ourselves enough to know what, what we need. And so you know, when it goes back to what we're saying about self-care, my number one question is always, you know, well, actually, who do you want to be? Mm. You know, you're telling me this is how you are now. You're frazzled, you're impatient, you're irritable, you know, you, you're not sleeping, you don't have the energy. Like, who do you want to be? How do you want to show up in the world? Yeah. Because then we can strategically, once we've created a bit of space, often with these things so that you don't feel that nervous system fight, flight, freeze thing going on so much, we can actually then see where we've got some opportunity to put in some consistent strategy. So I'm not talking about going to the spa once a month and you know, <laughs> hiding there for a day or maybe you can only get an hour or whatever. And don't get me wrong. I love a spa. You know, I worked, I worked out of a five-star yeah, spa yeah. environment for a long time. And it was a wonderful place. But if you spend 28 or 29 or 30 days of your month feeling like you are a hamster on a wheel or the swan, you know, keeping yeah. your head above water while everything else is just like, holy shit, then going to the spa for one or two or three or four hours that every month that's not going to redress the balance. Yeah. Sorry, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Go and to the spa, but just don't expect it to be the answer. You know, it's not a panacea. That's right. And I, you know, there is this process and I think part of, you know, the coaching work that you and I do is about, I love that question that you ask around who do you want to be? And what I find is it's reminding people that you actually already are that. We just have to uncover all of the stuff that's, that's 
sort of preventing you from being there consistently. You know, these habits that we've developed, these patterns that have been established from when we were very young. And I, you know, I appreciate that you shared your experience with your two children at three years old. I mean, they're already patterns and habits are being established. Yeah. And, and, and approaches to life and our ways of living are already established when we're children. And a lot of that is because we're fed ideas and stories about how we're supposed to show up, what's appropriate, you know, what's okay to do, what's not okay to do, what, you know, is it okay for me to express emotion? Is it not? Is it okay for me to eat this? Is it not? What role does food and nutrition play even as we're growing up? And so, you know, just a reminder for, for everyone that, you know, when, when we're in a place where we ask for help. And by the way, I recommend everybody ask for help. I've worked with nutritionists and dietitians. I've worked with naturopaths and coaches and, and mentors. And there's a reason for that. It's because all of us get to a place where we see these habits and patterns and we have this recognition of, ah, that's not working for me any longer. And we might not necessarily use the language of, oh, I see that this is a habit and pattern that's not working for me anymore but we know that something's out of alignment. And that's when we can utilize resources like Louise, who, who's been there and done that and does it every single day. You know, we can, we can say to Louise, yeah, these are the things that I'm noticing and this is where I'd like to be. And then we get the beautiful gift of realizing, oh wait, I already am that. I just need to do some unpacking and, and maybe there are other tools and resources that will help me stay there and stay aligned and grounded and centered. Yeah. Um, and on that note, because some people might not necessarily be as familiar with naturopath versus dietitian versus, you know, um, holistic medicine, can you break down for everyone exactly what a naturopath is and how it might differ from other medical fields or other alternative medicine that people might seek? And I, I'm using the word alternative here because that's kind of what's out there. I actually don't consider this medicine to be alternative. I consider it to be the most healthiest organic medicine we have. And again, to your point, Louise, I, I'm grateful for the technology that we have today that's enabled us to live longer, healthier lives, but knowing that that comes at a cost. So that's, well, that's you know, all my disclaimers, just, but... Yeah. <laughs> But just on that point, you know, you, you make a good point, um, Heather, because, you know, most people can now just, I guess, you know, accept that they are going to live longer because yeah. of things like better sanitation, because we do have access to emergency care, whereby a couple of generations ago, you know, uh, you, we wouldn't have had that. We've got cutting edge technology that is life saving and, and life, you know, it, it, you know, it does, it doesn't it increase our, our lifespan. Yeah. You know, what I would say to clients is what's the point of staying alive for longer if you just get progressively sicker, weaker, more mean spirited and, and so on, you know, because there is this in the Western scientific paradigm, there is this idea of, you know, aging as a negative thing. Yes, yes. Um, whereas in the West, uh, in the Eastern, as you know, in the, in the Eastern outlook, you know, there's a sense of you, you gather, you know, you, you gather wisdom and there's a sense of reverence yes. and, yes. and an understanding of, of kind of, you know, the, the, what you know becomes tacit knowledge and it's immensely valuable. Um, if people are asked to share it. Mm. Um, but in the westernized world, there's this tendency to just pursue life at all costs. And actually, I'm not, I'm not, I'm going to stop there, but there was a very interesting uh, show that I saw last year here in, in the UK. One of the, um, one of the hospitals in the south of England, where I originally grew up, uh, did they did a documentary where they had, 
you know, they talked about the ethical dilemmas that they mm. have in the, in, the, in the department, the pediatric department, because they can keep infants and children alive for so much longer, but it's, the, the, it's that question of actually whether they should. And, and I know that's immensely triggering for people, so I'm, I'm going to stop there. But, but you know, you, you get what I'm saying. Yes. You know, at the other end of the, of, this, of the spectrum, you know, I don't want to be 100 unless I can still live independently, have a clarity of thought process, can feed myself and feel like I'm enjoying my life um, and hopefully being of service still to others. And, and again, I'm not saying that's right. That's not right for everyone, you know, but it's right for me. And it's, it's right for a lot of the people that, that come to me because even if they can't verbalize that, they know that, you know, they've paid, a, they've paid a price often for the life that they've been living. They haven't paid that much attention. They haven't necessarily even understood, but they've got to a point where they know that things just aren't right. And if they don't make a decision at this point in their, you know, 40s, 50s even sometimes mid 30s mm -hmm. you know they know that it, it is looking like it's not going to get better and it's probably going to get worse because they're looking at their parents and going oh i don't really want that um so you know we we as you know we have to we have to do the work yeah. and and there's no guarantees and that's the thing that a lot of people use as a get out of course well there's no guarantees so <laughs> you know it's the same with the whole like nutrition thing well one one month you know coffee is healthy the next month, co next month, coffee isn't healthy. So, you know, screw it. I'm just going to drink coffee all day. Yeah. Well, that's not the same. Yes. You know, do you think yeah. it to, to justify our poor choices? Yes. Um, that's, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so, I think I may have gone off on a little tangent there. No, that's okay. Can you tell? So, I th no, I think it's important that we touch on that. It's it's technology at what cost, yeah. and and that's why I'm grateful that you know more natural approaches are are re-emerging. Yeah. So going back to your question about yeah. natural, what is a naturopath, and yeah. and how do you work, and how is the, it different the, from others? Well, see the 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 actual issue with defining naturopathy is because naturopathic education and naturopathic medicine is quite diverse yeah. around the world. So in some parts of Canada and even the U S you have, you know, naturopathic physicians. So they have an ND after their name. They are able, some of them to prescribe medications where necessary. It wouldn't usually be their first intervention unless they felt it was necessary. Um, and uh, I believe in, in some places they're even able to do small, you know, medical procedures and so on. Okay. I'm an Australian trained naturopath, so I don't have the ability to prescribe medication. Frankly, I don't want that <laughs> either. <laughs> um, because I, like you, don't believe that this is, you know, in my life, this is not an alternative. It is a part and parcel of, of, my family, who I am, that doesn't mean to say that there aren't, of course, times where I go to a GP, I ask my clients to go to a GP, you know, th there is a time and a place for that, but no one system of medicine has all the answers. So naturopathy in the way that I work with it is a, you know, it's a, it's a natural system of, of, of healing that I am fortunate enough to have a variety of skills and resources at my disposal to strategically assist someone in up-leveling their experience of energy and their quality of health and therefore the quality of their life. Yes. I love that. And, you know, I've, I've been to a naturopath in the past and I have, I've, the experience was so very different from any other type of, of, um, you know, medical experience that I'd ever had. It was such a holistic approach, which I really appreciated where 
the entire person and system is looked at as opposed to, oh, that's the problem. We're just going here. You know, we're just going to look at this one piece. And I know that, you know, when I'm working with my clients, I'm sure when you're working with yours, people may come with one thing that they're like, this is, this is the thing. This is the, this is the piece of the puzzle that I need to figure out and then everything else will work out. And it's like, yeah, well, so you're coming to me to talk about starting your own business, but how's your relationship with your partner? <laughs> you know, yeah, Because if they're stimming any access to say funds or not helping you free up time to facilitate that, then Yes. Or, you know, how is your, how's your money story? You know, how do you have time for, for, you know, getting outside each day, you know, and, and all of these pieces are integrated. And, and that's one of the things that I love about this work and this approach is that we're not isolating people and saying, that's the thing and that's wrong and that needs to be fixed. And if we do that, then everything else magically becomes well. It's, it's acknowledging that this is one piece of the equation. And by the way, let's take a look at some of these other stressors and these other pieces that are happening in your life. And how can we, how can we work with the whole of who you are versus the issue or the problem? Yeah. 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 So do you work with people all over the world? I mean, do you, do you take clients from everywhere or are you just working with people in the UK right now? So if, if anybody out there wants to work with Louise, how would, how would somebody do this? Yeah. I mean, I, I do, I have clients um, as far afield as uh, the, the U S uh, Australia. I've had clients in South Africa before um, the, the, the only limitation is really in some parts of the world where, you know, their access to something like Zoom or Skype is actually, you know, uh, prohibited. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, a lot of my clients are UK based. I do have some clients that are local to me. Sure. Um, however, a lot of my clients are now fully online. And again, the great thing about living in such a globalized world is that although you know, it can be difficult because sometimes these kind of things get stopped at customs, not, not for any other reason than someone's just doing, you know, a spot check or whatever. I have access to, you know, suppliers in the U S who are happy to work with me because I actually use their products here in the UK via their UK, you know, supplier and so on. So there's, there's much more freedom to be able to support people, which is, you know, that's the blessing of living at this time. Um, and so, yeah, people are, are more than welcome to get in touch if they feel that they resonate with, with anything that I'm saying. I do have a, a Facebook community. So that is we called the link. Health. We'll link to that below, everyone. Thank so you. Sort of get, join this group. She yeah, I mean, it's, it's free to join. It's called yeah. the Health is Wealth Collective Going back to that story I, I talked about at the beginning and, and my grandmother, you know, and her experience of, of being unwell. And, and actually my husband and I both run that community um, because he has some uh, skills that complement mine. And we do work together with a lot of, a lot of clients um, already. So yeah, come join us. I'm, I'm currently quite, uh, it's not that I do have a huge amount of, of time, but I am in there as much as I can. And so if you tag me on questions once you've joined, I will answer them. It might not be immediately, but you will get answers to your questions um, and, and so on. And, and people are actually providing some lovely feedback saying what a great community is. We've got some lovely people in there as well that are also, you know, have been on the journey with me and on their own journeys and, and they're very helpful and supportive and, and generous with their time as well, which is great. So yeah, come join us if you feel like it. Amazing. I love that. So anything else that you want to share with everyone about self-care or about the work that you're doing that we haven't covered yet? No, any, any pearls of wisdom? Oh. Um, <laughs> We already talked yeah. about the 10 fruits and veggies a day, which is a mantra. 
Yeah, well, as you know, but I mean, what, what I would say is I don't, I don't, I'm not someone who kind of uses scare tactics. I think there are a lot of uh, coaches, not just in the health and wellness field that are kind of like, you know, whoa, time, time, time's ticking. You've got to do it now, you know, and I am a big believer in, in carpe diem. Um, however, I do also believe that, you know, and, and you've heard me say this before, Heather, as well, look, life is not a dress rehearsal. And, and one of the things that I always say to my clients is that in our collaborative relationship, I'm here as an advocate to you, for you. Because again, in the busyness of life, and I use that word very, um, you know, very meaningfully at this point, in the busyness of life, we all at times need someone to say, hey, you need to look after you first. And what we also need is someone to say or to show us how we can do it. Because that's the thing. You can go to your, you know, you can go to your best friend or you can go to your mother or you can go to your partner or you can go to your, you know, to your doctor. And however good any of them are, they don't necessarily have the space, the time, the understanding or the, you know, or the desire to really show you, you know, they may not even have the skills to show you how to strategically create that space for yourself yes. um, so that your self-care becomes a daily practice. Yes, yes. <gasps> and, you know, I think it's why the people I resonate with the most are the ones who are doing their work. You have a coach. I've got coaches and mentors. It's not like we're separate from this work. We're all doing this work. And I so appreciate what you just said. We do need help. And it's courageous and brave to ask for that support. We all need it. I know I need it <laughs> in my day to day. I have accountability partners. I have people that I turn to. And it, it's nice to know that you're not in it alone. And I, I so appreciate that you show up as an advocate for and with the people that you're working with and the people who are in your community. Um, I, I'm grateful that you are doing the work that you're doing. I'm grateful for who you are, Louise. And oh, thank you. I'm so happy our paths crossed when they did. Um, so thank you for all of your wisdom today, everyone. I'm going to include links for you to connect with Louise below. So make sure you join the Health is Wealth Collective. I got that name right. You did. All this Wealth Collective on Facebook. You can connect with Louise directly via Facebook as well. If you're interested in learning more about her work or booking a session with her to get that support that you need to make self-care that daily practice we know it should be. Louise, thank you. And again, so much gratitude for what you're bringing to, to the world, to your clients, and to all of us, really. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for inviting me, Heather. It's been an absolute pleasure. Anytime. We're going to have to have you back. <laughs> yeah, I'll come back anytime. I love it. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. And stay ignited out there. We'll see you soon. Bye. I hope you enjoyed this conversation that I had with Louise. I know I did. She is an amazing, beautiful human, and I hope you get in touch with her soon. What was your takeaway from our conversation? I'd love to know put it in the comments below. I'd also like you to download the free guide, 50 self-care strategies for everyday living. You can access that below as well. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it, subscribe to my channel and hit that bell to get notified when I release a new video each Thursday. Stay ignited out there. I will see you soon. Bye. Bye.